a uh, few faces that we don't know necessarily, Rob Purdy and David Bellringer. Welcome, you guys. First on our list here is introduction of, uh, oh, sorry, approval of agenda. Do we have a motion to approve agenda? Uh, a few faces that we don't know necessarily. Rob I'll Purdy to approve the agenda. Yeah. Thanks, Vince. Seconds. Thanks, Jeremy. It's tough to speak. All in favor. But now I can hear, right? Uh, secondly, adoption of the minutes from our previous meeting. We recommend that the minutes of the advisory design panel meeting held the 12th of May be adopted. It's in safe driving. Any firsts on that one? Yeah. Thank you, Vince. Yeah. In favor? Perfect. Yeah. Thanks, Jeremy. Yes, I should leave. Uh, sorry, Steph, were there any, did we need to do any amendments to those minutes here? It's been a while, so I can't. I don't think so. And I, not, yeah. there were no late items for the agenda. Okay, great. We're, we're doing well. Good stuff. No public comments. No public, unless the applicants want to speak up, but I'm sure that's fine if they do during presentation. Right, sure. Okay, so let's move to new business. The DP application for 510 Trunk Road. Uh, Daniel, I'm thinking you have uh, an opening for that, do you? Yeah, I have just sort of a, a brief presentation going through some of the material that's in the agenda because I know there was there's a lot there, mm -hmm. um, just to highlight some of it, and then and then I can turn the screen off to talk about it, or I can put the screen back on if people want to look at certain of the pictures. But I know sometimes it's easier talking when you can see everybody and you're not looking at a PowerPoint all the time. So mm -hmm. we'll, sure, we'll see how we work, manage this. Okay. So, Which screen are you seeing right now? I think I may have shared the wrong one. Page Here. one of the DP 2021-0135. Okay. But do you see the actual, no. It's the, the um, like the back the end of PowerPoint. Pre presenter's yeah. view, not uh, show view. Yeah. Right. How's that? I am still no presenter. Sure, she's doing that. Okay. Can you just go through like this then? Sure. Yeah, okay. Oh, sure. Um, but so the present the um application before us today is a um an amendment to an existing VP. So this is at 510 Bowen Island Trunk Road. So it's the you know the lot that's next to the ferry lineup opposite of the museum. Um, it's located in our um, village periphery guidelines. So it's not in the main development permit area, but in the periphery. So we have these five guidelines that apply to the area. So um, the first about landscaping proposals should generally incorporate native vegetation to produce the green landscape to the maximum extent possible. Design of buildings and landscaping should minimize obstruction of views from existing properties, blend in with existing natural features to give the impression of small scale building forms connect with the proposed pathway system. Parking areas should be set back and screened. Um, buildings should reflect the character of the nearby village commercial areas to appropriate choice of finishes, material, and natural colors. And siting variances may be included in a DP. Um, so the design panel reviewed and the CAO issued DP in 22-2019 for this building. So this is the, um, the image that was included in that DP. And and then the overall site plan included in the development permit. 
I mean, that development permit included a number of clauses in the DP itself that said, um, before occupancy will be considered, there'll be a future amendment to the development permit. So when the development permit was issued, the design panel had reviewed sort of the overall concept of the building, the overall site plan, and felt like, okay, we're, we were comfortable with the overall building, but there were some elements that needed further refinement, and the design panel wanted to see more detail. Um, so the development permit was issued with these clauses that said, by way of future amendment, we're going to address different issues. So I included them in my sort of overall letter, and we just pulled them out here. So looking for um, the southeast corner of the building on the lower floor detail, um, looking for weather coverage out or bicycle storage, more information on the proposed garbage enclosure at the back of the site, and the patio area at the southeast corner of the site for more information there. Um, so as the building has, has progressed, the applicant has been able to provide some of that more information. Um, and at the same time, as happens on, on many projects, and some of the details of the overall project have shifted too, as they sort of discover things on site. So what's included in the agenda is um, that revised site plan. Um, providing some of the more details. So this is the landscaping plan that's shown. So um, one of the changes that I'll, I'll highlight is, for example, at the back of the building used to be a large ramp structure that would go back and forth to get essentially that accessible access to the second floor of the building. Um, and the change now has been given site constraints is a smaller area with a stair and then actually an exterior elevator to provide that access to the second floor. Um, so it means instead of this larger ramp area, it's sort of a reconfigured site area. Um, another sort of significant change is the plaza at the, the front southeast corner. Um, so on the previous plan, it showed like one, essentially one wall along the property line. So like a cement wall right at the corner. Um, and what they discovered is this would have meant like quite a significant wall at that corner. And so instead of what's proposed now is essentially two rock walls that step back with a planting area in between. Um, as a way to sort of address that, that patio area. Mm -hmm. um, okay. This is the same image, but just slightly bigger. Um, some other changes, so as you can see, it's like the color scheme has changed slightly. You can see on the building, it's, you know, has been constructed at this point, but um, essentially it's to reflect like what's available in hardy, hardy planking colors. It's a slightly more muted color, more brown than red. Um, and then other changes, I'll, I can go back and forth between these two, but um, at the southeast corner, you'll see um, this coverage essentially over the bicycle park and this coverage over the entranceway on this side have both been added where um, if you look to this image, there's no sort of those awnings those um, don't exist and they've been, they've been added to the proposal here. Great. Um, this is just then showing the overall sort of um, more civil design of the building, but showing some of the grades at the corner. Uh, and then finally, I was say, oh, and then we, we received the, the elevations of the garbage enclosure. So um, fairly, fairly standard sort of showing, okay, it's, you know, the size it is at the back with wood, wood finishing and metal roofing. Um, and it's just located, yeah, behind the parking lot in the, uh, on the site. So I may stop sharing at that point for some discussion and then um, the applicants are here as well to answer questions people have about any of the changes or the design work. Daniel, were there those comprehensively the items that were on the list to be looked at or were there any others? Um, the one that I didn't highlight, but they did include was the lighting plan. Right. Um, and it's provided, it's appendix, Let's see. It's in the agenda. It's sort of the, the overall electrical plan is provided showing sort of the low level lighting that, that surrounds like the ramp in the building. Um, and I didn't pull it up in part because it's hard to see. Kind of overall <laughs> image of it. It's yeah. that appendix EFG, it's item seven. Oh, yeah, I see it, yeah. Well, and the important thing there would be to, to hear if it's there to address uh, security of individuals and, and safety. And 
my guess is that it is. Yeah, and so and so it's sort of low level lighting as opposed to the, you know, what we, we don't stuff. want to see is the sort of the the, the pole with the large mm -hmm. you know, spotlight shining out through. Yeah. Okay. Great. I don't know, Robert, David, if you guys want to add anything just to the the status of the project or what some of the design choices, what you've gone into the de design choices and the, the amendments to the to the permit. No, I think you summed it up pretty good. Like any, most of the changes are due to the site. Like it's this, um, it's a triangle site and it's a slope site. So it's, it's quite constrained. Am I cutting in and out a little bit? No, you're good. No, we don't get my Wi-Fi didn't come back on after the power out. So I'm on my, I'm on my phone. So if it's cutting in and out, let me know. Um, yeah, it's really just mostly site constraints that have, shifted a few things but other than that um it's as planned uh, for lighting yeah it's all low level lighting it's it's mostly driven by um access in and out of the buildings and making sure ramps and stairwells are safe um but while also keeping lighting low uh kind of same as the rest of the cove so no real changes to that from the intention so yeah it's um uh, I don't think there's major changes. It's just really uh, site constraints that have shifted things around a little bit through uh, construction. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jeremy, Vince, thoughts? Um, Betty? <laughs> go ahead, Jeremy. Uh, it's, it seems uh, congruent to me. It's uh, fitting in the, the treatment of with the stacked um, and terraced stonework in the southeast corner. Mm -hmm. seems actually preferable to a major concrete structure. Um, I think it probably will fit in fairly well overall. Yeah, I would agree that that, that ramp that was uh, proposed earlier would, would have been, you know, kind of unsightly, really long. <laughs> yeah. And the elevator is much better, more compact. Yeah, Sorry to interrupt, but actually that ramp was originally a, had one switch back in in, in, pre, in future redesigns it, and looking at the rock that we were dealing with, it turned into four kind of switchbacks and was getting larger and larger and more just taking up, dominating that side of the mountain. So um, we've had to adapt to that. Mm -hmm. you, you, you probably would have found that all that rock work would have come close to the cost of the elevator anyway. Yeah, we did some quick math and it's just, it looks better too, and it's still completely functional. Um, uh, so yeah, we, we're, we're glad we've, we've gone down that road. Great. Yeah, I think I, I, I think you've nicely solved all those lingering questions that came from our last discussion. I, I, I especially that corner. I, I can sort of yeah. picture myself turning on foot or by car there, and I think it's a really nice uh, organic feel to what you've done there. Mm -hmm. I'm very in keeping with, uh, I don't know, <laughs> lot, lots of bone properties <laughs> about rock and <laughs> stout rock and stuff. Yeah. Betty, any thoughts there? No, I'm good with it too. I'm very happy to see the ramp gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw one sketch that showed the ramp going down and then a few stairs at the end of it. Yeah, oh, that's right. a good solution. <laughs> well, there is, it's, in, it's interesting. So this project, it's um, been designed to be barrier free. So that means there's accessible access to all four levels. Mm -hmm. um, there was a, there was a iteration that did have stairs at the end. Uh, that's called an area of refuge. Um, and it's uh, meant, it was added for that. Um, but the overarching uh, thing on this is to keep the entire building barrier for you, which is why there's an addition of an elevator and not just a removal of the ramp and adding, adding yeah. stairs. So, um, which was a design consideration in the whole project. So. Yeah, wonderful. Um, Rob and David, I think the one thing just in looking at this as a, that I didn't see was the um, the paving type in the plaza. I don't know if you have that or if that's something you've considered. Oh, we don't, Dave, go ahead. Yeah, we don't have a sample. It is like a, it's a gray um, uh, kind of square paver. Like, 
similar to what we've seen. I think the best example would be out in front of the vodka distillery. I think they have gray out okay. in front there. I got to double check, but All right. uh, one of the somewhere down there, there's a gray brick. I yeah. think it's pretty similar to that. <laughs> and that's, it's not the I red brick you see in Voodoo Square or in front of the pub. Right. And I believe it's being installed in like a herringbone pattern yeah. is mm -hmm. the idea. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Mostly, I was just checking. You weren't going to say it's going to be asphalt, or yeah, we're going yeah. to pay. We're going to pave it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it'll be it'll be brick pavers too. Yeah, great. Yeah, wonderful. Well, I I think uh, if if that if that was the the sum of the parts, I, I think I can happily support where you're headed with that. Mm -hmm. Agreed. You know. Yeah. So what's the language I'm looking for then, Daniel? They support the uh, design presented? Yeah, I guess you support, it's like the application names of DP 2021-0135 as presented at the September 28th meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's boring. Best kind, the boring one. <laughs> Okay, are you ready to vote? I think so. Do you want to just read it once and just and then we'll go? I'm going to fill in the details of the application name that the advisory design panel support the DP application as presented at its September 28, 2021 meeting. Sounds wonderful. We have a first on that one. Thanks, yeah. Jeremy. All in favor? Super. Great. Thank you. Thank you all. And I, I think that was David it. David and Rob want to stick around for the design guidelines? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're good. We'll leave those to you. <laughs> but thanks a lot, everyone. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you, Steph. Thanks, Daniel. Yeah. Um, just as a side note, was there something in the agenda I saw that also had to do with Cove Commons? So that was proposed. So the Cove Commons um, received this grant for um, like an outdoor, I don't say outdoor corners? concert area, but it's kind of it's like an outdoor structure where they could have like events take place in some of the landscaping around it. And we had looked to schedule that at the same time. Um, yeah. They weren't ready yet. And okay. so we'll be looking for a future meeting. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, and it's always sort of a, a strange one that's not in our um, development permit area. So it's not a DP application, but more it's like a staff recommends that it go to the design panel for comment before it goes to council to approve the design. Gotcha. Um, so it's a little different, but but yeah, we expect that to be coming soon, probably. Understood. Okay, good to know. Um, so on to 4.2, I suppose, the design guidelines update. Yeah, and, and in part, I sort of wanted to update because I hadn't met with you guys on this, this project and it's one that Jennifer had been doing in progress. Yeah. Um, Jennifer Les left, has left the municipality. She's gone to work for the provincial government. Mm. Um, and, and we had looked to transfer the project to Emma Chow. Um, yeah. Emma left the municipality for the North Shore. Um, <laughs> oh, that's news. I didn't know that. Yeah. So, you know, so I want to bring that update of like, that's why you haven't heard anything more of it since May is we can do a little, little bit of, of staff turnover here. And I sort of want to just try to, try to pick up the pieces. Yeah. Um, and then looking at sort of the, the level that they're at and how far like Jennifer's progressed. And I, I realized since we published the agenda, okay, I haven't captured some of the, your latest comments, like from the last... Mm. Jennifer had done a, another round of edits based on, um, I think her last meeting. Mm -hmm. So I have some comments from, from things like, I've, I've just noticed as I was looking through this morning, that like, okay, I have some comments from Jeremy that Jennifer's flag that I haven't incorporated into the, the set that's on your agenda. Mm -hmm. um, but in part, it's like what I wanted to do with the project was, was to, to try to go to council to update them and say, okay, this is how far it's gotten. This is the work that's been done. Yeah. And this is where we see we are in the work plan. Um, and so I was looking for the design panel. If you think that's appropriate or do you think you, you want to see a lot more work on it before it goes to council? Mm -hmm. um, and sort of what I was flagging was that 
um, like by, by when I go to council, it would be looking then to say, okay, we're, we think we're ready to take the, these draft guidelines for one to council to see what they think or the public to check in before then actually doing the bylaw that would be adopting the guidelines. So there'd still be, you know, there's still lots of opportunity for tinkering as we go. Mm -hmm. I just didn't want to sort of keep it with this panel for a long time, getting it a hundred percent right. And they go to council council say, this is what we were thinking at all. We want a different uh -huh. direction. I'm sort of thinking, okay, I'd rather know now it's like a general check-in of, of the direction of the guidelines. Yeah. Um, but I'm yeah. open for, for bots or other ideas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, two things come to mind for me. One is, and this is, it's, it's a lingering thought, but I've had yeah. since this started was that it, I think the intent is kind of to simplify and give more clarity to something that people have seen as kind of gray and maybe not understood how to proceed with it. Yeah. And, and to some extent it does do that, but at the same time, it also has levels of complexity to it that might further mystify people. Yeah. And, and one of those um, is, is overlap a bit with things that are already in the code or in the bylaw that you have okay. to do anyway, like yeah. like in getting points, for instance, for um, environmental sensitivity or energy efficiency, when really we're at step code and right. that yeah. stuff in theory would be entirely covered off by that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's it, there's these levels of uh, redundancy that potentially yeah. a, a, an eye to that could go through it and look at areas where It either be reworded or just simply not there because it's being yeah. covered gotcha. in other areas. That's a very good point. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, if you have to do something anyway, <laughs> why do you get points for it? <laughs> right. Yeah. Makes sense. Eddie, do you need a little catch up or are you? Hmm. I can't, I don't recall when you left or fell off. <laughs> And, and what I'm thinking too, Mike, just even in light of, okay, the Code of Commons stuff coming back is maybe then this is a good chance for, you know, the panel to tell me, yeah, what, what they think of the latest state of it. And then we can discuss it again. You know, we're meeting in a month, say, for the Code of yeah. Commons. And then at that point, then I could bring any more thoughts we have and then look to go to council. So I'm going to council sort of in December, maybe, or the new year. Yeah. It, that probably makes sense, Daniel, because yeah. I know the other thing that we've talked about is this notion of uh, design sensitivity, and you might get a whole bunch of points for some things, and then one glaring, awkward piece still gets approval because you've met the point requir requirement. So, yeah. you know, it's it's like that Max 8 jet <laughs> <laughs> where human interaction was taken away by the computer and led to disastrous results. <laughs> bad analogy, so bad. but yeah. points there. Jeremy. Um, I'm, I'm in, in the whole process of that, I'm, I'm not uh, convinced that the idea of crediting, uh, reducing the process to crediting, uh, you know, sort of points that you, you check mm -hmm. off is, is an appropriate way to go about something that is fundamentally an aesthetic process because, um, you know, uh, what's appealing is so much more than the sum of its parts. Um, and when, when, you, when you reduce it to, uh, you parse it out as, as sort of very specifically designed things that on the surface, it looks like it's, trying to be, make it easier, but I think it actually really muddles the possibilities of the end result. Uh, better than that, for example, would be uh, examples with, if, if a developer wants to understand what it is we're aiming for, uh, to actually give examples on Bowen with photographs or from yeah. elsewhere, but if, I suppose it would be particularly cogent if they were from Bowen and, as representative of the kind of thinking we're at. And then the, the builder can integrate that into a, a more holistic vision uh, of the intent. Mm -hmm. Am I making sense? 
Yeah. 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 I, yeah I, I, <laughs> I'm almost picturing something where the chart and the, the, the boxes that you put numbers in, that's that's kind of like a um, you know, the, the the preamble to in theory heading the right direction before we do our review, if you will. Yeah, and I'm not even, I'm not even convinced that that, that approach is uh, you know. It almost yeah, I, be in the wrong direction. Uh, aesthetic things are you can't you can't break those down in that in that way. You can give examples, I suppose. Examples are probably the best thing because they they have context. Mm -hmm. um, the rest is just plucking some ideas out that uh, don't necessarily have uh, aren't integrated necessarily. Yeah, I mean, they, they might be. Um, but I could see lots of lots of problems. Even, I mean, there were some some things we looked at. Well, this is quite a while ago. Um, there were examples. I think there was an example in Victoria. Of, they had they had a design guidelines, and uh, they there were photographs of the end result of these de design guidelines, and they they were aiming for kind of a traditional thing, and the end result was just completely. <laughs> right out to lunch as far as i can see it was it wasn't fetching there's nothing memorable about it i mean it wasn't a building you cared about in any way um mm -hmm. so that that's the kind of thing i'm afraid of i guess um mm -hmm. you know uh, uh probably yeah. thinking the best representation of what is uh, a bowen style would be to give examples that we there's sort of a consensus of liking them and saying and thinking that they're fitting photographs mm -hmm. of them maybe a brief blurb about some specific element of of it uh mm -hmm. isn't that kind of thing? yeah i i understand like like i see jennifer's intent with the point system to make it objective and 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 come across as uh, even handed, right? Uh, but that said, you could almost just take away her point system entirely because a lot of the uh, the uh, objectives are broken down into clear, concise objectives, which I think fit with, with, with everything. So if we could just take away the points part and then maybe uh, uh, add some uh, representative imagery like Jeremy is talking about, I mm. think we'd have it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was thinking about even like one I was just thinking about was, okay, well, I could keep the things that say mandatory and I can make the others just desired or something, but maybe mm -hmm. it just, maybe it's just gone all together and it's just, these are the broken down things that have examples and this is what we're yeah. going for. Um, like for example, objective D, human scale design. Uh, we know uh, uh, surface variability, uh, roofs, entrances, glass, right? And then it has a, a little uh, definition about each of those categories kind of thing. Just eliminate the mandatory and points business. And it's just like, yeah. these are the things we're looking for in the, in the, in, in the design, right? I mean, yeah. yeah. Okay. Great and then point. in that case, like we could still use the, like the overall thing is sort of ticking and like the applicant can say, okay, I think I've met these different, like I'm providing these items. Yeah. yeah. Betty, you had something to add there. Yeah, I'm, I'm going the same way. I've had trouble with the rubric from the beginning and I have a lot of experience with rubrics. That's an analytic rubric and it's not actually the right purpose for it. If you were to have one at all, it should be a holistic one, which gets at the design thing. But I agree. I think, the work has been done in terms of articulating what we want, and we should just throw the rubric out altogether. I think it's <laughs> going to send us in some really bad places. Yeah, yeah. You know, a lot, a lot of her thinking was based on uh, what was that? Uh, Christopher Alexander's pattern language, and hmm. even Alexander said he, he said people don't understand that book. Uh, they do treat it like a recipe book. And he said, it isn't, it's a series of correlations that are the mm -hmm. critical part of the process. Mm -hmm. And he said, you can, you can't just, you, you, I mean, you, you'll just end up with something maybe funky, but it won't be enduring <laughs> or, or beautiful because it's the relationship between patterns that, that matter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm almost sensing, like I'm picturing 
the photocopied gr green sheet is the first sheet and typed out on a typewriter is snug coat guidelines. And there's about 25 sheets of a bunch of type and some pattern language images that are in there. And if you just simply took that and said to somebody, could you make this, could you, could you put some color in it, make it contemporary, review the wording, you're, you're almost heading in the direction, I think, of, of what we're talking about. Because it's in the subtleties and the innuendo, I think, that where you end up with the, the thing that everybody likes, like you're referring to. Mm -hmm. But the imagery, you know, the, the, the pencil line imagery is great, but if it's coupled in with pictures of examples, and whether they're Bowen Island or whether they're elsewhere, you know, they, they comply with what our thinking is. Mm -hmm. And because of the internet age, which wasn't around when that thing was created, you now can, from a remote location, go on and look at whatever you want. And if, if it suggests mm -hmm. you go in a certain direction for, for themes and ideas, maybe it should stop there. Mm -hmm. Creativity is in how you deal with that terminology. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, so where do we go from here? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So then, what? You know, so what I'll suggest maybe is that I'll make changes based on this. Like I'll capture whatever latest comments I missed. I'll take out the points. I'll re like work it then based on that, that it's like, these are elements we want to see. I know Jennifer has done some work get collecting photos of different elements that she hadn't had time to include in the, in the guidelines. And so I could do some work putting them in to see, you know, if, if those are then providing the examples that we want to see. Oh, that would be great, Daniel. Mm -hmm. And I don't know then, yeah. You know, Daniel, I just was wanting to get a sense of what what it ex exactly uh, you were wanting. I uh, wasn't clear on what you wanted to present to council, um, so as so as to avoid uh, doing a lot of work in the wrong direction. What was the the gist of that thought? Well, I think I, I hadn't connected with you guys, and the project had kind of been on hold for a bit. And I thought, okay, I want to check. And if you thought like, oh, well, we're all happy with them, it's fine. Then I would just take it to council and say, okay, here we are. And if you're saying, well, we're not quite, we're not sure about this approach, then but I'm not going to bring it to council and say, okay. mm -hmm. you know, the design panel loves this. They, they think it's the best. We should just adopt it unless, yeah. you know, if that's not the case. So I'd rather than, you know, try to tweak it based on this, put some more examples in and then, and then be going back to council and saying, okay, this is the direction mm -hmm. that we want to go in. Yeah, I, I, I think it needs more thought, but certainly okay. before it goes to council. Yeah, I can do that. Mm -hmm. So we might have some direction on this. <laughs> yeah. Steph, are you, are you thinking about how we're still going to summarize this thing? I'm thinking that we're not... Do, do, do we need a resolution? Yeah, I don't, I don't know about... I need a resolution. Okay, good. If yeah. that's easier, we just have the discussion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. An, an action item that it'll come to the next meeting. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah, I do love them though. Thank you for bringing that up, Mike. I just don't think it's time. <laughs> and then as always, if people have more thoughts on the project as a whole or any of the individual ones, feel free to send comments. Um, so I go to planning or direct to Daniel? Even just direct to me. Yeah. Do you okay. think that it was appropriate to send to the group and thereby maybe oh, sure. yeah. inciting oh, yeah. the imaginations um, of the rest of the yeah. group? Yeah. Daniel and ADP. Yes. Daniel's in ADP. Oh. He's oh, in nice. it. Nice. Yes. <laughs> Daniel's in a lot of those, yeah. fortunately. We're all we got. How do you stay sane? <laughs> Yeah. He doesn't. I'll let you know. <laughs> okay, I think um, we look forward to hearing and giving more on that one. Uh, That's and then, so and what are you thinking for Cove Commons then, Daniel? Like, would be uh, maybe a month from now or? Yeah, I mean, all, I mean, I heard from them essentially, like they knew we were canvassing for the meeting. They said they were going to make it and then and then they weren't going to make it and they'd let me know essentially. So when they, when they say they're ready, then we'll canvas for a meeting. 
Okay. Rather than set them a deadline. So I think there's something um, has come up at the public art advisory committee table that they want to get some design ready in order to engage that group. Okay. So they've been encouraged by that group to hurry up. So Great. Everyone's really Super. excited about this project. One. Yeah. So like I would anticipate it's due in like spring, a, anyways. Yep. I would anticipate like late October meeting, so like in a month. Great. Exciting. Yeah. Sounds mm. wonderful. Well, then I think we will move to adjourn. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All in favor? <laughs> <laughs> Have a good day, everyone. Thank you all. Have all a right. good one. Thanks, thank everyone. you. Take care. Bye. Bye for now. Bye.